In Scotland, the general election campaign is already underway. The Lord Provost of Glasgow has resigned after a row about her expenses. Eva Bollander had claimed for £8,000 spent on clothes, hair and makeup. The longer she was staying in office, the more credibility that was being drained away. Eva Bollander didn't break any rules, but her spending cost her a privileged position. The Scottish Parliament has heard allegations a child died as a result of contamination at a children's cancer ward in Glasgow and the parents were never told why. Hello again, good morning. Cancer survival in Scotland is being put at risk because of staff shortages. Opposition politicians say that should be a wake-up call. More on our top story this evening. A whistleblower has claimed the death of a child cancer patient in 2017 has been linked to a contaminated water supply at Scotland's largest hospital, the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow. The leader of the Scottish Nationalist Party at Westminster, Ian Blackford, says... Good evening. The Scottish Health Secretary has told BBC Scotland she plans to change procedures to ensure she's kept better informed about problems at hospitals. Jean Freeman's comments come after a number of newspaper reports on further issues at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow. Another day of bad headlines for Scotland's Health Secretary. Newspapers today report a mother believes her child's current illness could be linked and that a whistleblower claims to have identified 10 new cases. Jean Freeman insists she should stay in post. The Scottish Tories disagree. This drip, drip, drip of serious information uh, and concern about our NHS shows that the Health Secretary has lost confidence uh, of people and patients and parents. And for that reason, I think the NHS uh, requires fresh leadership. Scottish Labour say action is needed at Glasgow's Health Board. It's clear that the Health Board has become dysfunctional and chaotic and has lost the confidence of those parents and the wider public. The leadership team at the Health Board needs to go and Jean Freeman needs to sort that out. The Lud Dems want more clarity on the state of the Glasgow Hospital. I want answers, I want to be clear what she knew, uh, understand what, how decisions were taken so that we can learn from this and make sure that it doesn't happen to anybody else. We need an urgent review as to whether this building is still fit for purpose and whether it's making people sick. That needs to happen first and foremost before any political considerations. The Health Secretary Jean Freeman says she's not going to step down over the ongoing infection crisis at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow. Let's speak to the health journalist Penny Taylor. Morning to you, Penny. Good morning. What more have we learned about what is going on at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital? Well, obviously, the Sunday newspapers in Scotland um, covered this story extensively. The Scottish Mail on Sunday, for instance, established that a third child um, was infected in what they describe as the deadly water bug scandal at the hospital. But we are now facing, particularly after some of the stuff that's been in the newspapers today, a crisis of public confidence. Whatever their abilities and all the rest of it, you need to replace the leadership of that health board and you need to do it now. Tonight on Reporting Scotland, the health secretary says she knew in September that a child died after being infected by contaminated water at a Glasgow hospital. Good evening. The health secretary says she knew in September that a child had died after contracting an infection from contaminated water at the Royal Hospital for Children in Glasgow. But Jean Freeman says she didn't go public because of patient confidentiality. Stephen, you're impressed with reporting in the Sunday Post today? Yes, yes. Um, and it's just the first of a, of a, a triple whammy of, of blows to the, um, the NHS in the west coast of Scotland because we have the Sunday Post, um, Marion Scott's excellent story, and then in the Mail on Sunday, an another very good story which is pointing out that um, another child um, was infected um, by because of... of uh, problem bacteria in the water supply and that was in September so it's not you know, there's no excuse now for, for these are historical cases um, and then we've got the the Herald which is talking about a patient's dreadful experiences at the Royal Alexandra in so Paisley. in Paisley yeah and uh, Katie Ruth Davidson has been talking about this in her column on in the mail on Sunday in the mail, yes um, she has um, I mean it's really um, you know the, the her column is entitled you know lies more lies and why this minister has to go but it's it's not just a sort of a, a diatribe against how this has all been dealt with by the First Minister. But helps. she also tells us some things which I, I didn't actually know, that, um, this, this, that uh, six out of Scotland's 14 health boards are now in, in special measures. That is mm, astonishing. 
Um, that's an astonishing... And, and also, when we're, you know, continually in the Scottish Parliament anyway, um, the Scottish Health Service is held up as, as being so much better than the English Health Service, I think six out of 14 being in special measures uh, is, not a, is not a good look. Good morning. The mother of a three-year-old boy who died while being treated at Glasgow's Queen Elizabeth University Hospital has claimed she was ignored by the Health Board and the Scottish Government. The first big TV debate of the election campaign went ahead on ITV last night. It saw Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn go head-to-head -head in the first ever TV debate of its kind between a Prime Minister and leader of the opposition. Jeremy Corbyn has said that he is open to a second referendum on Scotland early in the lifetime of the next parliament, if he's head of the government. And Nicola Sturgeon has made it absolutely clear that the price of her support will be a referendum on Scotland in 2020. So you're going to have a year of two referendums, you one on Scotland that. and Mr. one on Mr. the EU. I've said okay. there would be no deal with the SNP, there would be no support for a Scottish referendum in the early years of the next Labour government. So so and and we, if the SNP leadership out? choose to put the Conservative government back Is in office with its austerity programme, that's their choice. Combative at the end, but it had been very, very serious. And some of us earlier were discussing uh, the tragic death of, of children at, at hospitals in uh, Glasgow. Let, let's talk about, about that one first with my colleagues, uh, journalistic chums here. Paul Hutchin is always difficult when the First Minister confronted with an individual case. We had two cases here. Um, and the Jackson Carlaw from the Conservatives going fairly strongly on this, very strongly on this, trying to say the, the health, health secretary had uh, misspoke, basically. Well, one group of voters is facing a dilemma in this election. The people who want to leave two unions, the European Union and the United Kingdom. These Leave Leave voters who are in favour of Brexit and Scottish independence have no natural home. They probably have to prioritise one option. Our political correspondent Andrew Kerr reports now from the Murray Coast, which had been long-standing SNP territory, but now is the most pro-Brexit area in Scotland. Do you want to see Brexit get done? Oh, Definitely. Just get it over and yeah, done with. It needs to get it's over been and jargon done on for so long now. Let's just get it done. It's yeah. all the people want. Just hurry up and get it done. Hello, good morning. The mother of 10-year-old Millie Main says she's convinced her daughter would still be alive today if action had been taken to address water contamination at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow. Tonight on Reporting Scotland. We track down the candidate suspended by the SNP over anti-Semitic posts on social media. Hello, good evening. The election candidate Neil Hanvey, who was suspended by the SNP over anti-Semitic posts on social media, has told the BBC he hopes to be allowed back into the party. The SNP has withdrawn support for Mr Hanvey pending disciplinary action. Nicola Sturgeon has urged SNP activists not to campaign for him, but some are doing so anyway. Our chief political correspondent, Glenn Campbell, went in search of Neil Hanvey in the Kirkcaldy and Cowden Beef constituency. We seek him here. We seek him there. In Kirkcaldy and Cowden Beef, we seek Neil Hanby everywhere. Hi, my name's Neil Hanby. I'm the SNP candidate for... But not anymore. The SNP suspended Neil Hanby over online posts that he accepts were unintentionally anti-Semitic. Nicola Sturgeon's party says it has withdrawn all support from his campaign. But the Labour candidate, who's defending a majority of just 259, is not convinced Mr Hanvey has been cut loose. And he still seems to be using SNP colours, and there is an implication even on the doors that um, he, he may be taken into the fold uh, when the dust dies down. I went to find him at his new crowd-funded campaign HQ. I don't think there's anyone in. No sign of him either at the Yes Hub in Kirkcaldy. So we've tried ringing Neil Hanvey, we've called at his office, we've exchanged messages with him online, and it's clear that he really doesn't want to do an interview. But we hear that he's due to appear at a hustings event in Loch Gelly, and so we're going to go along there and give this one more try. At last we caught up with him and asked why he'd shared anti-Semitic material. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. 
Um, I don't think, uh, well, I'm quite clear at the time, there was no motivation that was unacceptable. I don't really want to get into the detail of that before there's been a full and fair examination of the facts. But you know your own mind. Do you have a problem with Jewish people? Absolutely not. What happens if you win? Mike McLaren runs Nether Strathkinnis Farm, not far from here, and I caught up with him in the middle of a busy potato season to get his thoughts on the election ahead. Are you in favour of Brexit? I mean, will that influence how you vote, for example, next month, or is it just a case of, of getting certainty one way or another for you? I, I think, yeah, we, we, need, we need certainty. The, to me, the country, we've decided to, uh, we voted out on the um, three years ago, and um, it has to happen. It's what everyone, I'll say everyone voted for it, it's what we, it's what, it's a democracy we live in, and that's what we decided uh, was to leave, and I think that has to happen. And the big argument on the anti-Brexit side tends to come down to the economy and the negative impact that it will have on Scotland's economy. So are, are you afraid of what will happen or, or how do you think you will cope if we come out of the EU? Long term, I think we will, better, we will be better off leaving the EU. I think that um, you know, councils do have a legal duty to provide temporary accommodation yes. to homeless people. So this is a difficult issue for the First Minister. I mean, the government likes to boast about having world-beating legislation in this area, but it's the SNP that runs Glasgow City Council, and it looks like we've got a pretty bad, lousy record in this area. In fact, it's the First Minister's friends who form the administration. Only two of your eight waiting time targets being hit. You've been in for a long while. You have hit the a and &E target since 2017, the two-month cancer car target you haven't hit since 2013. Children are dying in a new Glasgow hospital because the water's contaminated, oh, perhaps we... by pigeon droppings. A new multi-million pound Edinburgh hospital, should have opened in 2012, is still unfit to open. You can't even get the ventilation system to work. You've got the worst drug addiction problem in Europe, but you cut drug treatment budgets by 15 million. You clung on to your last health minister. You're under pressure now to sack her successor. I mean, you've called for legislation to protect the NHS from Donald Trump. Maybe the NHS needs legislation to protect it from Nicola Sturgeon. But let me just uh, start with actually a text that came in from Gordon Wilson. Um, in 2014, you and your party stood on a platform with the SNP and we were told how rich we would be uh, because of oil. Forget the fact that the oil price plummeted. How can you, as a saviour of the environment, support a government which based most of their financial plans on using fossil fuels? Andy, you're on the inside. How do you feel about that? Um, I, I understand the argument in terms of money coming from Westminster in terms of the barn at, you know, consequentials and things. I just feel that there, there is the ability of the SNP and the Scottish government at the moment to control some of the money that they have in terms of how they spend the money that comes from England. And clearly, you know, you've, you've mentioned just previously that caller that you want to protect the vulnerable groups. At the moment, I don't think the SNP are particularly doing a good job of that. You know, I just come from a busy hospital tonight where I've been working and the situation there is, is horrific, frankly, mm. for some of the patients. And I realise mm. that there's pressures in winter, but it's getting worse and I don't see the government in Scotland doing anything about it any differently to anywhere else in the United Kingdom. So that that is why I challenge the SNP to take accountability for that and say that yes, there are problems and yes, we need to fix it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I do, I do Black accept that, that I do apologise, unfortunately, you will hear the music there and we are out of time on, on this hour. Andy, thanks for your question. Um, Gordon, good morning, Gordon St Andrews. Good morning. Good. Well, what would you like to ask um, Jackson Carlo? Um, hello, Jackson. Um, I would like to ask why... Uh, you're letting the nationalists off the hook with regards to the chronic mismanagement of our country. Um, the mantra about no indie ref too is, is fair enough, but uh, we should be also focusing on the fact that there's so much benefit derived from being part of the, uh, of, of the United Kingdom. The fact that we receive £1,968 more on average for man, every man, woman and child. Compared well, well to Gordon, I think you're singing Jackson Carlow's song. What's your question? Well, the question is, he's not exposing the, the fact that uh, the, the nationalists are financially mismanaging the country in terms of... Uh, that we've got. I, I don't think it all boils down to money. It's how you use it, and uh, the, we've 
we've spent our entire... So, Jackson, uh, you, you are failing to expose mismanagement. Well, I, I, I'm sorry that uh, God would think that. Um, you know, I do think that as we move forward to the 2021 election, the focus will be very much then on the devolved agenda and the way in which the Scottish Government is managing Scotland's public services. I think we all know there is a major uh, crisis in Scotland's health service at the moment. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Nicola Sturgeon has spent three of the last four days uh, down in England participating in debates rather than getting on top of what is now an absolute scandal in the health service with a third child having died because of infections at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital we were told about in the last week. So I do think there are issues there. We know we're following, falling down on the international education leagues. We know that the Scottish economy is uh, beginning to underperform against the rest of the economy across the United Kingdom. And we have the highest taxes, which I think are going to prove to be a disincentive to new businesses setting up here, or for the very valuable types of people that we need high-paid consultants in our NHS where we have vacancies, some of which have been unfilled for years in Aberdeen. But a lot of that argument will be for 2021 on the issue of how the SNP have been managing Scotland's government. In this election, it's about who is going to form the government at Westminster, and there are two clear choices, Labour or the Conservative Party, and I am determined that we're going to do everything we can to stop Jeremy Corbyn and to stop Jeremy Corbyn then facilitating uh, Nicola Sturgeon's constitutional obsession, which is all being pursued at the expense of that domestic uh, record of failure that I've just talked about. OK, well, um, you, you did mention there um, the the situation in Glasgow, particularly with uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. We do have somebody asking if you think there should be resignations. This is Elle Withers in respect of the, uh, the QE hospital. I, do you know, I'm not someone who has regularly called for resignations. I think it's a very easy thing to do, but it doesn't necessarily resolve the underlying problem. But I think we do have two issues now. Uh, in respect of the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, it seems that every fact that we are learning has not been volunteered, but has arisen as a result of either a whistleblower or an investigative journalist uncovering it. And so confidence in transparency and candour, both with the Health Board, but especially with the current Health Secretary, who doesn't seem to be able to convince people that she is on top of the actual crisis that we keep hearing more about from one day to the next makes it difficult to see how parents or patients, particularly parents of young children who are being treated in the hospital and who have expressed a lack of confidence, it's difficult to see how the current people in charge can actually now offer that level of assurance. Do you mean at a political level? or at in terms a political of a... level and an administrative level but my concern I think in the first instance is to actually get on top of the issue because I know sometimes you can call for a public inquiry and a public inquiry can be a good thing, but it can then kick way into the long grass any resolution of the issue. Right now we know that there is an ongoing issue about which we are being drip-fed key information and we need to know what's going on and get something in place to resolve that. And I don't think people at the moment are persuaded that's happening or are persuaded that the government is giving the, the appropriate leadership or that the First Minister personally is engaged with it because she seems to have devolved everything to Jean Freeman, who at the moment is struggling to convince the public she's on top, top of the issue. She is First Minister of Scotland and she has an important government meeting this morning, which was, had been in the diary for some time. Uh, she has made herself available on numerous occasions to debate with, with others. And of course, it's Boris Johnson in many cases that has failed to but not to the listeners up. of Scotland. Well, no, I think she's taken part in a, a number of debates in Scotland. Um, she has taken part in, in leaders' debates. Open but phone the fact in, is, open phone yeah, in. But, but the fact is, Kay, when you talk about some of the others that you've had on the programme, they're not running a, a government, they're not running a country. There's a government meeting that the First Minister has this morning that she has to participate in. I am the leader of the SNP at Westminster. Is it that the course, UK this audience about... in this election is more important to Nicola Sturgeon than the Scottish audience? Good grief, no. I mean, it's uh, about making sure that we win this election in Scotland for Scotland. And, of course, we project that voice throughout the United Kingdom. But the First Minister has been on countless programmes in Scotland over the course of the last few weeks and months, and I guess she will be over the course of the coming days. But I would ask people to reflect on the fact that, you know, people... We, had, we asked a question earlier on about drugs policy and what the government's doing. The First Minister's running the country, and that's what she's doing this morning. I'm here as the SNP yeah. Westminster leader, as a person that's standing to lead that group in Parliament to answer the uh, sure, questions Sure, sure. We, we appreciate she has a, a busy schedule, and, of course, she's had all these other commitments, you know, for, for Five Live and GMB in this morning and, and Andrew Marr. So, you know, um, clearly she can't do everyone. And we've come to the bottom of the pile. Um, Ian's in Bathgate. Good morning, Ian.
It did also strike me that uh, you in Scotland will have experience of, of, of elements within your politics who want to blame everything on the other, so to speak, the, the English, Westminster, all the rest, and, and polarise in that sort of way as well. I, I think it's going to be pretty nasty. The Scottish Liberal Democrats weren't selected to ask a question this week, but afterwards the Orkney MSP Liam MacArthur said it was time to focus on domestic policies other than the Constitution. It's absolutely right and proper that at First Minister's questions, notwithstanding the election on Thursday, that we are focusing on, on these issues, on, on the education record and, and, and the policing record uh, of this government. But across the board, we're seeing a crisis in the delivery, uh, delivery of mental health okay. services. We're seeing a GP recruitment crisis. We're seeing a &E targets m uh, missed time and time again. Voters go to the polls in the general election tomorrow. Tonight on Reporting Scotland, the chair of the Scottish Police Authority resigns, condemning the way Police Scotland is governed. Good evening. Two chief constables and now three chairs of the Scottish Police Authority have quit in the six and a half years since the national force was created. It's always a political matter. Professor Deacon calls for a greater separation between police and politics. At Holyrood, it was, however, centre stage. Police Scotland has been plunged into crisis. And this comes on top. This comes on top of recent warnings from senior police officers that further cuts will be made in police numbers to meet current budgetary limits. That's now three chief constables, three chairs and four chief executives in just a few short years. Today we learn the inspectorate don't think the authority either supports the police or scrutinises the police. The Tories pressed the government to carry out an investigation into the problems in the SPA. I asked the First Minister whether she and her Justice Secretary would look into exactly what these problems are. The First Minister failed to acknowledge, first of all, that there was a crisis, and secondly, failed to take responsibility, and thirdly, failed to take my proposed solutions on board. Is anyone any the wiser now on any of the major issues in the campaign after tonight's debate? Well, let's get into some of this with our guests. With us on the sofa, we have former Scottish Labour leader Kezia Dugdale, Peter Duncan, who previously served as a Scottish Conservative MP, and Liberal Democrat commentator Siobhan Mathers. Thank you all very much for your time this evening. You've still got the small issue of the fact that if you do mm -hmm. manage to go it alone, the deficit in Scotland, which the audience picked you up on, picked Nicola Sturgeon up on this evening, is at 7%. In order to be a member of the EU, they insist on 3%. So you can't go alone right now and be a member of the EU. You don't meet the threshold. Well, why, is the deficit, why, is, why is the deficit at 7%? That has nothing to do with housing. It's to, do with, your it's to do with your fiscal capabilities. You wish to be a member of the European Union, separate to, the, to, to England, separate to Wales. You want to be independent. You can't even join the European Union because you have to be at 3%. Well, actually, the reality you're, is... So you're, you're, you're wrong on two counts. So first of all, uh, having a 7% deficit while we're part of the United Kingdom is hardly a great advert for staying within the United Kingdom. We're not independent. If we had the full powers of economic uh, fiscal levers, of course, you can make a difference. Hold on, I didn't interrupt you. The second point is incredibly important uh, as well. Actually, you're wrong about that being a barrier to join the EU. Croatia, Poland, Hungary all had a deficit higher than 3% and joined the European Union. Tonight on Reporting Scotland. A warning that lorry loads of empty bottles could be smuggled into Scotland if the government's deposit return scheme goes ahead.